Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Thank you. This is a press conference. A uh, press conference for members of the press. We are glad that members of the Central Committee MPs and others have joined us, but essentially it's a press conference. I will invite members of the press to ask their questions. Um, I know there are a lot of things that we must discuss. But unfortunately, we ought to restrict ourselves to the speech that has been delivered by the president. I think you heard he has condemned the rising dictatorship, is condemned the blaring of separation of powers and interference of institutions such as parliament, the judiciary, ECZ, by the executive and by the president. He has condemned tribalism, regionalism, nepotism, I think we need to restrict ourselves to the issues that the president raised. If there are any questions, I invite whoever wishes to ask a question. Okay, my dear brother, introduce yourself and tell us where you are coming from. Thank you, Ernest. Any other question? Well, introduce yourself and your name and institution. Um, Joseph Tamantanda from Time TV. I, I just want to get views from the CCP public president. Because we have been receiving sentiments from those in government that the um, government has no hand in what is happening in the PM. Are you in any way following this? <coughs> sentiments from those of government. Uh, can you confirm to, to the media this afternoon that indeed PF you are intact uh, because calls from those in government have been that you are failing to resolve these internal rankles amongst <coughs> yourselves. Are you failing to resolve these internal rankles that you are experiencing as a part? Can you confirm to the media that you are intact? Thank you, Joseph. Any other? Yes, you must send. Thank you so much, Dr. Nagatelis, and uh, the entire auditorium. I'm Joseph Pierre from KBN TV. Just basically follow up to what my colleague uh, here, Comrade Man, uh, and, uh, has talked about. Your Excellency, my question to you is um, what are the, or what could be a practical, you know, resolve to this issue that we talked about? The country is aware, the world is aware that uh, you've been addressing the press by these press briefings. But the question is, the country seems to be at a point where certain things may require practical solutions. What do you, do you think should be done to eradicate all these issues that we are talking, talking, talking about beyond asking not of the pens and the papers and stuff like that? What is the answer? Thank you, Nusen. His Excellency will take the three questions, Your Excellency. We'll start with Ernest Chanda from the Mass. Um, he says, what could be motivating this scheme against the Patriotic Front? Uh, Brother Ernest Chanda, you have to know that uh, there's so much fear on the part of President HH. Fear arising from failure to deliver. Yeah. Yeah. Haunted when you compare and contrast, like I keep saying, 
his leadership and that of PF miles apart. Right? So he's restless. If only he could deliver one tenth, probably he would be sleeping pretty easy. But he has failed lamentably. So this is what is causing all these things. And that's why he even says they are regrouping. I'll go for the next. And this is exactly what he's doing. Uh, you know, so it's not surprising at all to some of us uh, that he's going to this extent and he's still going to go even further in trying to eradicate the PF. He knows that it's the only PF which can unseat him. Because the Zambians have weighed him, measured him, tested him, and tried him, and he has failed the test. So he has no place, no reason for being in the State House. That's what is causing all these things. Then, Your Excellency, Joseph from Prime TV is asking, he's saying, government keeps on saying that they have <laughs> no hand in the happenings in the PF. They think that it is internal wrangles that we are failing to resolve. Uh, Joseph is asking for your uh, view, and he's also asking, is the PF intact? I just say, <laughs> you, 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 mean, you mean you didn't see what happened on the 24th of October 2023? How could Miles and Balon working with the, that, uh, other, other, other rascals <laughs> hmm? convene within short notice a conference at Mulungush International Conference Center with the compliments of Zambia police at, at the Black and Co. You mean the police are uh, managed by who? By the Inspector General of Police, who takes orders from the President of the Republic. So that is just one example. The Registrar of Societies worked overnight to change membership of the registered members of the party. Who runs the Registrar of Societies office? GRZ. So who is the, the, the top man at GRZ? Is the Secretary of Cabinet working with the President. They are the managers of the civil service. So we have so many examples. Fingerprints were checked in the night, then the police. So I, I don't think really, uh, Joseph, you will need much more than that. And you've seen how swiftly they've moved in over the development of getting uh, Robert Chavinga in. Imagine, yeah. uh, the same ink, the same paper, the same pen, which was used to appoint Chavinga, was used to dethrone him, but the speaker refused to recognize that. Isn't that an example of manipulation? Mingarato? So, so, so I think that I can give you so, so, many, so many examples. So we are asking whether uh, do those examples suffice? <laughs> I, think, I think they suffice. But, but you see, um, you, 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 you can also uh, see that uh, even when we go to court, yeah, we go to court, they will dismiss us. You go to look for an injunction to restrain somebody, they will say, come after one week, come after one year. When it's in their interest, they will give an injunction ex parte. The same day, mm -hmm. it happened yesterday. So I think that he, uh, you are a journalist and I think you can read what is written and you can also read in between the lines and so on. The PF is intact, my brother. Very intact. We, we, like I said, we have some rascals. <laughs> and in every household, you may find that one or two children are abused by their colleagues to take on their parents because he, either they are loved too much, or they are the only ones who can take on their parents and so on. So every institution has uh, one or two bad seeds, like I said. So we do have bad seeds, but we are intact. Certainly we are intact. And we, there's only one PF that we know of, the legitimate PF headed by me. Yes. So, so, so to imagine what is taking place, the circus taking place elsewhere, we as PF are saying we have the last laugh. And Zambians are getting increasingly angry by the day with this kind of thing because they feel that the institutions of governance, the executive and the legislature have been abused to a point where now the respect that the public has for them has reduced completely, such that some people are saying, what next? 
And this takes me to the next question of Mr. Innocent Piri, practical solutions. Yeah? You see here, when I say that when your back is against the wall and you cannot fight back, you will do what might not be prescribed. So I have been painfully holding back many Zambians saying, no, please, please, please. Let's give these guys a chance. Let's allow the law to take its course and so on. Taking to the streets is not something I would like to support because what happens when people take the streets? You can see how Kenya is now. Huh? That I wouldn't uh, wish to, 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 to proclaim. Uh, but uh, I know that one day we'll march peacefully. I hope we'll be allowed to march. Uh, and uh, that's the nearest I can go to processions, processions to demonstrate our frustration and anger at the way we're being governed. That, I think, is within the law, and we can do it. We'll get to that later as we go. People going with placards saying, HH must resign, that is within the law. HH have failed, that is within the law. We will do that at an appropriate time. But for now, I think we will do advocacy so that other people also can speak. I saw a very powerful statement from one chief in Kawamba, and to him I say, can I be some of one being? Can I be some of one being? We, we, need, we, need, we need more voices from the church. We need more voices from civil society. We need more voices from all those who care about Zambia. I think that I can advocate. That is a practical solution. But when that fails, obviously we'll take the streets, we'll march to parliament, or we'll march to state house. That is within the law. So uh, I, I think that uh, let's not advocate practical solutions which will destroy this country because uh, already this country is destroyed and whoever will be president in 2026 will have a mammoth task mm -hmm. to reconstruct this country, the economy and everything else. So let's not get to practical solutions which are inimical to the well-being of uh, good law and order. Thank you, Your Excellency. We'll take the last three. Yes. Your name and... Uh, Good afternoon, Mr. President. My name is Blessing Shandawire. I'm um, representing Crown Tribute. Uh, Mr. President, last year on the, on the 24th, uh, Mao Samba was allegedly elected as the, the new PF president, which prompted you, Mr. President, to come back into the politics. Um, fast forward, Mr. President, not too long ago, we saw pictures on Facebook, you and Mr. Samba. I want to find out, and the Zambian people need to know, what is the status quo between you and Mr. Samba and you? Also mentioned, Mr. President, that you are going to fight a political and legal uh, what happened in Parliament. Are you going to fight together with Minister Samba? Thank yes. you, blessings. May we have two more? Yes. Uh, Joseph Banda again from INTV. Uh, Joseph Nakavid. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph. Speaking uh, from the raw point of view as a Renate Council, uh, Mr. President. Uh, would you help us understand, because we want to know, the nine expelled or the nine nullified seats, uh, if the by-elections were to go on, they have not caused these by-elections. Will those affected MPs be eligible to be contest? Because they have not caused those by-elections. Thank you, Joseph. A lady, a lady, where are the lady journalists? IP again. Thank you so much. Uh, my apologies. I have to come back again. Um, I'm receiving a lot of uh, notice right now, so I have to come back. Mm -hmm. So basically, the question I have is in regards to the capacity of uh, President NHM to resolve uh, the issues such as uh, the high cost of living. We can talk about the high cost of uh, living. We talk about the low shedding, and we are not forgetting pure. That's a question which I landed on my desk right now. Do you think the president has the capacity to handle those things amid the, the, amid the, the by election, the possible by election that may come along the way, if I can be entertained? Lastly, our ears this morning, we got a wind of an audio involving a conversation bordering on, on, on Emmanuel J. Banda mm -hmm. and some people in government. Whether true or not, but you can't blame our ears. You've listened to that. What is your take over these issues? That's lastly, 
Thank you, YP. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Your start with blessings. He was asking about Mount Samba. Yeah. And, uh, the current status with Mount Samba. Yeah, Mao Sampa is my young brother, and he, I would like to believe he, that he, the members in their wisdom have a lot of saying. One of them is, Uawataimina. You know, we should learn to help those who have fallen, and at the same time, uh, find a way of rehabilitating them. I think I did refer to uh, a line or two in my, 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 my speech where I say that we are ready to have people who have fallen uh, on the wayside back into the party if they so choose to work with us. And the examples, of course, are many. We have worked with people who have previously gone away, insulted us, called us names, and so on. We have included them. So we are talking to Mayo Sampa. And I think he, for now, it will be premature for me to say anything beyond the fact that he, we have healthy contacts and he, we are looking for a way of putting the bad patch we experience behind us. And this will be done pretty soon. Uh, Joe, Joseph, you came with another question. What is the question? That as a lawyer, do you think that the nine expelled especially that they didn't cause a by-election, that they are eligible to contest? I, I was looking at Article 72 of the Constitution just a while ago. It is very illustrative. It says that if you have been wrongly treated by your political party, expelled in this case, you can go to court. And the court will adjudicate on the matter. And if the court finds that the expulsion was unconstitutional, oppressive, was out of uh, the dictates of democracy, then you can choose to remain in parliament as an independent. That is what the law says. But if the court so finds that uh, you are indeed uh, guilty of some misconduct or wrongdoing, and the party was correct in uh, uh, rejecting you or expelling you, then only then do you lose the seat. And I think the court ought to write to ECZ to say, look, this seat has fallen vacant. Because of this, 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 then the court will authenticate the expulsion. This is that we will maneuver and get to, to, to have an election. That's what my understanding of the law is. And the, uh, I know that uh, I may be uh, probably rusty in my understanding of the law, but uh, I think I'm correct on this particular one. Thank you, mm. Innocent period says uh, with the crisis the country is facing, economic crisis, cost of living crisis, and all the crisis, load shedding, the disease outbreaks, does President Nakainde actually have capacity to resolve this issue? And then they refer to the issue of Emmanuel J. J. Banda, the recording that's raging in the country currently. You know, as an opposition party leader, Whatever I say about uh, President H.H. H. will be perceived from that angle that he, I'm just being a opposition. But the truth is, ask any Zambian on the minibus today. Mule Munashani if into. I've heard of stories of people being told, can you please drop this passenger? Because he is a People saying we're willing to pay for this passenger because he's now testing our patience with this. If you not want <laughs> so, so probably the public can answer that question for you. You are a journalist and just to go and jump on the minibus to Matero today and try and exhort and sing praise for HH and you see how they will treat you. So I, I think that's, that's, that sounds it. Uh, the cost of election obviously is another waste and the, we don't want to go that route. We shouldn't go that route at all. And, that, and, and you know why? That's why that Article 72 was brought into the Constitution to safeguard the parliamentary seats from being abused by people resigning or defecting or being fired really needy. That's exactly why it is there. So if you go and read it, as a journalist, I know it's plain English, you understand what I'm talking about. That particular Article 72 was deliberated upon by a lot of other commissions on the Constitution to protect members of parliament from being abused by their parties. And this is a good example. So 
I've, heard, I've also heard of that uh, audio, and I can tell you that that audio has been in existence for some time. They were trying to suppress it. Uh, they were trying to suppress it. There's one minister on, on, on that audio. I don't know whether you've heard the whole thing, but it goes for about one hour, 30 minutes. It's long. Uh, one permanent secretary in the company of another went to see JJ's family and talked and talked and talked and told them to just withdraw that statement implicating the, the three musketeers from State House. So, so, so uh, my comment is that uh, when we tell you that these things are happening, you should believe us because they're happening. And uh, you know, they, 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 what I can tell you is uh, when you get thugs, uh, you get thugs or criminals, you give them state power. This is what happens. Yeah. This is what happens. So, so we need to wake up and fight to restore decency, integrity, and morality amongst our leaders. We never did that ourselves. We never did. If we did, they wouldn't have even managed to campaign and get into power. We never did that. And we, I, I, don't, I don't think he, any well-meaning Zambian who is privileged to be at the highest level would let his uh, men do what is being done. Because he supposed to check them up and say, sorry, you can't do this. Yeah? And he let your word be your word. But in the hypocrisy we have seen, I know that he will be compelled to say, no, I don't support this. It's what me. But meanwhile, he's telling them, I'm about me. Yeah? So this is what he does. So, so, so I think it's a shame, an indictment on the executive that he, they are doing criminal acts in the name of the state. And that should not be allowed. But we, time will come when somebody will be made to answer. And those who are accepting to do wrong things in the name of superior instructions will be personally liable. That's the bad part of this experience. So if you follow instructions from your boss, which are criminal in nature, and you execute them, when the time comes, the back stops at you as a police officer, as a civil servant, as a government agency, to, 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 to answer to the people of Zambia. You won't say, no, I was sent by President HHS. You won't say that at all. So it will not be a defense. So let me warn those colleagues who are privileged to be in power or to serve the state, that time will come when they'll be made answerable in their individual capacities. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Excellency. Well, okay, next. <laughs> At this stage, I will invite all of us to stand and Honorable Godfrey Smiley uh, to close in prayer. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutati Mpondo. I love you, peace. I gotta go.